as John said, I am Rachel Bain. Um, I coordinate the instructional technology in the chemistry department here on campus, uh, primarily for the undergraduate program. Um, we have some professors in our department who just love using the latest technology. They love getting into the pilots that are going on, um, trying out new tools for the students, trying out new tools for the instructors. And so um, I'm really happy to be here today to talk about study pattern. Um, the professor in our department who's been using pattern or study pattern is Judith Burstyn. And she ended up being double booked this morning. And so mm -hmm. I'm here talking to you instead. So let me give you a little bit of background. Um, as we just said, we're talking about chemistry 104 and 109 that are using this tool. Um, these courses are primarily freshmen. And as you know, at the university, we get kind of the, the cream of the crop of students. So we get the top 10% of students um, from high schools. They come in, many of them didn't have to do much to get through high school. And so they're coming in with questionable study habits already. They get to college, they have no idea what it takes to succeed in a college course as compared to a high school course. Um, they get to their first exam and they study just like they did in high school and they bomb. They just, they just totally tank and they come in and they talk to their professor and they say, I don't know what happened. I studied so much, I spent so much time on chemistry and I got to the exam and I, I just don't know what happened. And most of the time it's one of two things. Either they didn't put in enough time that is what it takes to do a college course. Um, or they put in a lot of time but they're not studying effectively. They're reading the chapter but they're not focusing on the important things. And we all know that there's a huge difference between, say, reading for four hours or doing a half an hour of problems that make you apply what you've learned in the course. So um, those are the, the two camps that we tend to see most often. And so what we were really hoping for um, in being part of this pilot is a tool that could help <coughs> students understand not only the amount of time that they really are putting into a course, but also the quality of the time that they're putting in. Um, and this is especially outside of class. And so, what we tried is a tool called Study Pattern, or just Pattern. Um, it's like a Fitbit for studying. So it's a way to log your activity just like you would with a Fitbit in your steps. Um, this is a tool that was developed at Purdue, and it allows students to log every activity that they do for a course. And they can even log it for courses that aren't part of um, the study pattern pilot. So they can do it for their other courses as well. And as they're logging this time, um, they not only log the number of minutes for each activity, but they also get to rate how productive they felt that time was spent, uh, which, which can be a really valuable tool. And then the tool itself will spit back a summary to the students of how many hours they've logged, uh, which course component they're spending the most time on, and the time and day of the week that they tend to be most productive based on what they're reporting. So it's, it's easy for a student to say, oh, I spent 40 hours last week on chemistry. It's taking up my whole life. And then they use a tool like this and say, well, you know, it was two hours here and maybe a half an hour there. And by the end, it was maybe six or seven hours. So it's, it's a nice sort of self-reflective tool and gives them a better handle of, on how they're spending their time. So from a student perspective, this is how it works. Um, and this is a little dim. But they start off by choosing the course for which they're logging the activity. Uh, once they're in the course, there's a predefined list of activities. And so they'll choose the activity they're working on, whether it's homework or 
reading or studying or group sessions, um, office hours, just, just about anything that you can Im imagine being uh, part of a course is in there. Um, and then they'll log when they did it, so start time, end time, date, stuff like that. And then finally, how satisfied were they with that time? Did they think that those 30 minutes of practice problems were really worth doing? Yeah, that's, that's going to be highly satisfactory. Um, if they just spent eight hours reading the textbook, they're probably not really excited about that. And maybe recognize that that was not a productive way to spend that much time. So uh, what happened? Um, we've used this two semesters now. In the spring, we used it in Chemistry 104. Um, we got over 50% of the students using it, which in any co course for something that's mostly voluntary is a pretty good turnout. Um, students reported 49% of their chemistry time being done outside of class. So we have three lectures a week, it's about three hours. We have a three hour lab a week, and then um, there are two dis or one discussion period. So then they were doing about that much time outside of class as well. And one of the neat things to see is when they rank themselves as being most productive. And uh, it was Saturdays for Chemistry 104. Kind of blows my mind. Right. That I was my initial major, impression, right? too. Well, like, maybe it's like, one semester. <laughs> yeah. But um, if you think about it, that's when they have time to do the studying. This was spring. so. Oh, and this, okay. this was spring, <laughs> yeah, right. See, now it's end, but I... And by spring, they're a little more into the college experience. And so they recognize, okay, Saturday isn't necessarily just a free day. Mm -hmm. I can use it to study. Um, so that was a spring, and then this fall <laughs> we're using it in Chemistry 109. Uh, this is the accelerated chemistry course, so it's like two semesters of chemistry packed into one semester. And so not surprisingly, um, they're spending more time out of class. And that's great. You know, we love to see that from an instructor's point of view. And as I was just kind of poking through the data, I saw that the productive day uh, tended to change throughout the course of the semester. So overall, I think it's Friday. But if you just take the last month, it's Tuesday. Why Tuesday? <laughs> but that's, that's when they find themselves being the most productive. Um, and part of what happened is also the student responses. So uh, James McKay is in charge of this part of the pilot. And he did a survey at the end of Chemistry 104. And we got a lot of anecdotal feedback based on that. But the students seemed to like it, those that used it found it to be a valuable tool. Um, many said that they were made more aware of their study habits. And some said they actually changed their study habits based on the feedback that they got, which you know is what we want to see in a tool. They did find the interface to be a little clunky. Um, so that's something that we can send back to Purdue and say, hey, what about this? And we've sent them suggestions in the past, and they've been pretty responsive. Uh, coming back with, oh yeah, I, I can see why you would want that and they'll do that then. Um, there's also the added benefit of being able to compare your own study habits with the average of the rest of the course. So if you're in there and you're saying, I spend so much time on chemistry, and then you see that you're spending six hours a week and the average is 12. A little self-reflection there, I might want to be spending a little we have no way of knowing if this made a difference to their grades or not. That wasn't part of what we did. Um, but you know, ultimately, that's something that we could look at. And what we would do next time. So if the tool continues to be improved, and that's kind of a qualifier here. Um, and this is why. Um, it's not super customizable from the instructor's point of view. So as you're setting up the different categories, the different activities in the course, um, I'll show you a little later. There's a list of things, and they may or may not apply to your course really well. 
And it's a little customizable, but it isn't a lot customizable. So that would be huge in terms of moving forward with pattern for us. And then um, cleaning up that student interface so they can log their time more easily. But assuming it does improve, and it has been improving, so we have hope there, um, what would we continue to do? Uh, right now, we give them just a few token points, like five out of the thousand in the class, for logging a certain amount in pattern so that we can see how the tool works. Uh, using a little more incentive to get more students in there would be something we would consider doing. Um, because then we get the data. And once you have the data, you can start to show best practices, you can show expectations. Last semester in Chemistry 104, the average amount of time that students spent was this. And so you can give the students some guide guidance in terms of how much time they should be spending on the course. Ultimately, it would be really nice to be able to correlate the data with individual student grades. Uh, right now, we as instructors can't see individual student data. Uh, we can only see an aggregate, which really is the way it should be. But if we could correlate it with the student grades and see, well, you know, to get an A in the course, these people are spending this much time and focusing on these activities, whereas the C students are doing it this way. Uh, could be really illuminating for students in terms of how they're studying their courses. And Do you have questions about, yes? Did you provide any kind of training or guidance on how students should use it, best practices at all before they started? We did provide a little bit of training. Um, James came to every lecture for that first lecture period and showed the tool, talked through the tool, um, showed where to get more information. Mm -hmm. So there's a nice KB page mm -hmm. uh, that gives all the information and gives, gives you links to documents that kind of walk you through things. So there's, there's good information out there and James has been great in terms of just training our students and being the contact person. If something goes wrong, um, they go to him, not to me. Yes? Other than the clunky interface, did students who didn't become regular learners or users say anything about why they didn't like it? Or? They found it time consuming to log their time. I think that was the biggest obstacle. Uh, and again, we. Over the course of the semester, about 60% of the students used it, but only about 30% of those were regular users. So people would start and then they're like, ah, oh, that's not worth it, and, and not bothering anymore. And I think this is where it changes. It's not like Fitbit, right? Right, Fitbit, you just right. put on and it does all the logging for right. you. Whereas this is like, all right, got to open up my app, got to uh, click here, got to do right. this, got to do that. Have any of you ever tried to like track your meals or nutrition or yeah. or any of the, like it's time more tracking? Like that. Yeah. Yeah. I hate yeah. time tracking. It's yep. the worst part of my job. <laughs> but so I would need to have an incentive, but I could totally see it. Like we know educational sciences tells us that reflecting on how you study mm -hmm. improves your grades. Exactly. So we know that there's a benefit just like right. reflecting on your diet improves your diet and reflecting on your um, exercise it improves your health. So, yeah, incentives would be, but I don't know how. I, I, I will look at this idea. If you can get it for the pilot, maybe make it a one-click option. Like, if they just hit the Fitbit, you know, then it says, okay, I'm doing something for that class. All you find out is time put in. But that's <laughs> something. Yeah. But there is, the app has a timer. So, it literally can just, hit start, I'm studying, stop, and it'll automatically log it. But the number one feature request we've gotten from students, which I'm sure that we will approach Purdue about, uh, well, I guess there's a couple things. Number one, uh, they want to be able to enter like a class schedule, and then just have that entry basically automatically created for them, and then all they have to do is rate it. Mm -hmm. And then the second one is push notifications. Mm -hmm. They want it to mm -hmm. say, hey, you haven't logged in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, then also like, yeah, hey, you haven't actually studied for a while, or you actually haven't, you know, 
here are some things that we know are good for you that you haven't done for a while. How about that? Uh, do you, from the data that you're getting <coughs> from this, have you seen any implications for how you, as instructors, design the assessments or weight the assessments? Um, we haven't looked at that, no. But I think the tool is such that you could, uh, just in terms of the amount of time that students are spending on each thing and whether you view that as worthwhile and so should be worth more points. 